oh, I can't stay focused today because I have not gotten any sleep. Uh. Hey everybody, it's Stephanie Deona. I'm here to do a book review on Insurgent by Veronica Roth, the second book in the Divergent series. Had a very, very eventful night. Um, so I am running on very little sleep and I have to meet up with my friends for a birthday lunch. So this is my book look for Insurgent. It's just based off of the faction uh, Dauntless. So I basically am going to go with color faction themes and things like that. So I decided to do Dauntless because whatever excuse I can use to wear black lipstick, I will. Like, I wanted to do something more extreme, but like I said, I have a birthday lunch to go to right after this. Basically, we are picking up where they left off in Divergent, where Erudite takes over the minds of Dauntless to attack Abnegation because Abnegation runs the government. And basically, Erudite wants to be the government because they believe that they know better. She's dealing with the aftermath and trying to hide out. Um, she seeks refuge at Amnity. And basically, she's just trying to figure out a way uh, with all of her uh, allies to uh, remove... Janine from power. So it's basically, I mean, that's the really rough synopsis. There's no really way for me to give any more than that because that would be giving away a lot. It's a really intense book and a lot of stuff goes down. So the one thing I will say right out the bat, um, in comparison to the movie, the synopsis is almost completely different. Um, the ultimate goal of removing Jean from power and figuring out what this weird message is that she's trying to hide from everybody is the same, but the way that they go about doing it is very, 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 very different. And the sequence of things that happens in getting to that point to the end of this novel is very different from the book and the movie. You absolutely could not go from the insurgent movie into the Allegiant book you will be so confused. Uh, they definitely kind of sidetrack um, on that a lot. It is very different, but both are good in equal ways. Like, I really like the way the movie did the message, like with the box and the she's the one who can unlock them all. I get that. That's cool and liked what they did with that, but I also really liked what they did in the book, which is really different from that. The message isn't a box and she doesn't unlock it with um, the serums. I really, I mean, I enjoyed the movie. It was a very simplified version of what happened here, minus the whole box thing. And they focused so much on the box thing that a lot of other things fell through that made me really sad. Like, the characters! We lose so many of the brilliant characters that are in this book. Got really sad that Uriah was really lost in the translation. I feel like there should have been a huge focus on Uriah, because Uriah is going to be a very important character in Allegiant. That is, I haven't seen the Allegiant movie yet, so I don't know if they even included Uriah in the Allegiant movie, which they should have because he was a very pivotal point in Allegiant. Specifically in the book, um, I really enjoyed how Caleb seemed a lot more curious. He was, he almost seemed a lot more, I would say there was like an innocence to him. Um, he didn't seem like some brutish character like he did in the movie where, uh, he just was doing what he was told and thought what was most logical. I mean, he was in the book going off of what he thought was most logical, um, but at the same time you could see like, I, he truly believed like he was doing the right thing by society and that he was sacrificing something by his actions without really saying what those are. One thing that they left out of the movie that I'm really sad they did was Tris uh, ends up getting high essentially, uh, accidentally getting high, <laughs> and uh, she acts really weird and loopy and funny so I'm, I'm really sad that that was left out of the, of the movie because that would have been a really great comic relief section. Edward's character and how he comes back and the role that he plays in the entire universe is so... it just makes sense to me. It was great. I, I loved seeing him come back and be a fully realized human. He leaves very early on in the first book to become factionless, so I'm glad that we got to see where he ended up, and I, li I like that he had a part to play later on in the book, and I thought it was really interesting. So specifically in the movie, they make Triss seem so impulsive based off of emotion. But in the book, she is impulsive, but it's more based off of duty. She feels she has a duty to do something, so she does it. And she doesn't question it because that is what she feels she has been given the task and the responsibility to do and get done. So I love the way that she is impulsive in the book because it makes sense to somebody who feels like they have so much weight on their shoulders to do something right, to do something right by others. And in the movie, they make her seem so impulsive based off of her emotions, like, oh, I'm so angry, so I've got to punch this guy. I still love Triss's character, which is really rare for me to continuously enjoy a character, even when they go into their deep, like, their dark points. It's important for a character to kind of have a downfall. It's the hero's journey. You know, they don't believe that they have what it takes or they they lose what it takes for a split second and they have to get that back for themselves and 
Beatrice has that moment and I love her through every bit of it and she's such a fantastic female character fantastic lead character and she deals with so many emotions on such a real level Veronica Roth did a really great job of making the emotions of grief and loss and betrayal and guilt very very human because I have dealt with a lot of the same emotions in the same way that Tris does. I mean, one of my favorite quotes from the entire book is about grief and guilt. Grief is not as heavy as guilt, but it takes more away from you. And that hit me in the feels real hard. In the book, uh, Tris and Tobias's relationship, I love the development that their relationship goes through. I love that their relationship has a lot of dishonesty in it, but they talk about it and they work through it. And then they commit to being honest. They set boundaries and they make rules and that's what I feel like relationships should be is compromise, conversation, and um, communication. So I love that Veronica Roth made a very healthy relationship. I mean there are parts of it that are unhealthy. Not every relationship is perfect of course, um, but it's not the typical young adult relationship where it's very glorified, very emotion driven and, and run and dominated and very unhealthy and there's no clear communication and nobody's setting boundaries with each other. They're just assuming that the other person already knows the boundaries or should know the boundaries or you know something like that. So I really appreciated Tobias and Triss's relationship um, as it progresses, as it develops, as it compromises, because um, it seems like a very real relationship to me. I feel like I know people in relationships like this and, and that makes me really happy to read in a young adult novel. And on the topic of maturing relationships, I love the way that Christina and Triss's relationship matures and heals and I love the forgiveness between the two of them. I love that there was conflict between two of our main female protagonists, but they make it, they, they work through it. They don't just say our friendship is dead because you betrayed me. She just has her moment of grief and she processes it and she decides whether or not she can forgive Triss. And then Christina finally gives Triss her forgiveness and they move on from there and they, they develop their friendship from there and they let it strengthen their relationship. They let it strengthen themselves and become better people instead of dwelling on it and letting it stand between them as people. They don't let it prevent them from coming together to achieve a mutual goal. So I thought that was also beautiful. The relationships that that Veronica Roth has created are think I think my favorite things about her books is that the relationships are so relatable and they are so real and they have the real emotion and the real compromise that needs to come with relationships that you build, especially in your young adult life. That's when you're learning how to compromise and it's when you're learning how to have these kinds of deep, meaningful relationships. And I think that Veronica Roth did a beautiful, fantastic, genius job of, of writing those into a young adult novel and making them not only relatable to adults but also young adults and setting a good example of like what those relationships should look like as far as conversation, communication, space, respect, boundaries. All of those topics are so beautifully written into her books with all of her characters. And she has so many. It's like a Harry Potter universe where there's so many characters to love, but you, you get involved, you get deeply connected to each one because she makes them very, very real. Unfortunately, that's really all I have to say about this book. I mean, honestly, that's probably a good thing. I think I rambled too much. I loved this book. This was probably my favorite book in the series because I have now read Allegiant, which I will also review very soon, as soon as I can. Uh, a lot has happened and I started my second channel and I'm also trying on vlogging for, uh, for size so um, I have a lot on my plate but I will try to get that out to you but I'm really glad I got to finally re record this review uh, I hope that you guys enjoyed it please give it a thumbs up if you did please talk to me about this book in the comments I really loved this book and I would love to discuss it with you guys but I'm gonna end my book review for Insurgent by Veronica Roth here but I will definitely see you guys later